G'day, and welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. That's me. Today, I'm talking about rainbow lorikeets and bush birds in your backyard. Rainbow lorikeets are a native species, and Australia is the land of parrots. We have more parrots than any other continent on Earth. The rainbow lorikeets are birds that we'll commonly see throughout the eastern states of Australia. They're a really pretty bird with all the colours of the rainbow. Our parrots themselves are generally pretty brightly coloured. Some, like Echolectus parrots, the female is blue and red, and the male is bright green. At lorikeets, it's actually pretty hard to tell the difference between a male and a female. They all look really similar. Now, a few of their physical features I love their tongue the most. It's like a brush. And every time they put their little tongue out, what they would be doing is sticking that into a flower. And in the flower is the nectar they eat. That's mostly what they eat. They will eat bits of fruit and other things, but mostly they eat nectar. Now, their beak is quite strong. I've been bitten a few times and it doesn't feel very nice. It will draw blood. They've got really good eyesight and a good sense of developed smell to be able to track that nectar down. Their color, it's still camouflaged. You think about a bird in the trees. Now, we look at trees and we see green, but if you look closely, you'll see browns and reds and greys and blues and greens. So when they're in the tree feeding, which is their most vulnerable, because things like peregrine falcons can come and swoop down on a lorikeet, that camouflage still blends them into the tree. It's interesting that in some major cities, like near me on the central coast, rainbow lorikeets flock together at night and it's safety in numbers. Now, I actually know where there's a big supermarket and they planted some fig trees next to it and the lorikeets love them. The fig trees have enough branches for the whole flock to live on and you might be somewhere lucky enough uh, to see those birds too. Rainbow lorikeets are diurnal. This means they're awake through the daytime. Now, at nighttime they sleep in that big flock and they come together safety in numbers, but that's not where they breed. That's not where they have their chicks. When they do that in the breeding season, which will normally be around spring when most of the trees are getting good rainfall and they're flowering, a pair will move off and they'll leave the flock. Before that, they court. They do lots of funny things. Courting is when a male is trying to prove to the female that he's a good, strong male. He might feed her, he might kiss her, he might preen her, they might call together, make their sounds, but then they'll peel off and that pair will go and find a hollow log a safe hollow log, high up in a tree, where there's no threats of the predators on the ground. The eagles can't get them inside a log, maybe a python. The female lays the eggs down in the bottom of that hollow, and she can lay two to six eggs, and then she incubates them, she sits on them. Now different birds do different things. Some, the female sits for half the day and the male sits for half the day, or the female sits for the day and the male sits at night. Some, they both sit in there, but some, one of the parents has to incubate those eggs all the time and keep them warm. Now through incubation, the egg develops. And a little while after that, the chick hatches. But the chick can't feed itself. So what happens? Well, mum and dad, someone might still have to stay and keep them warm, but mum and dad go out and they collect nectar and they put it into what's called a crop. It's not like a belly, they put it into a crop and they can regurgitate that. Sounds a little bit disgusting, but they can regurgitate that nectar and feed the chicks. Lots of people like to feed birds or native wildlife. Now, some people ask, should I, is it good for them? The short answer is yes, but you have to research the right foods because something like bread or fatty sausages for kookaburras can hurt them. It's not their natural diet, so you need to mimic their natural diet. Two pieces of homework for today. Now, the first one is, I want you to look into and research what type of foods are okay to feed to bush birds, and maybe a couple that aren't, so you can share that and help others learn. Now, the second thing is, no matter where you live, even if there's only one or two or three species, I want you to keep your eyes and your ears open today, and try and count the different species of bird wherever you are, whether you're with your family, whether you're at home, out your window, in your yard, see how many species you can get up to. I'll do the same with my voice. 
Thanks for watching everyone. Now, the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment, like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us and hopefully you. Now, if you like what you've seen or want to show me your homework, just put it into the comments. This is what I do, connecting people with nature, and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.